Turning now to decorative finishes, by and large we can't talk about paints in terms of samples here, so I'll pass over that. That involves microscopes and very small samples. But we can look at wallpapers. Now, um, this is one example of a mid-19th century wallpaper, um, and it would probably have been partly hand-blocked, so that the papers are in fairly small sections, uh, a rough printing is done of maybe the background design, and then often small children are engaged to stamp on um, with a block. Uh, the colours are like these little uh, rosettes here, so there'd be a stamp for the pink and stamp for the green. They had to be aligned properly to create the, the pattern. Um, during the 1850s, that's gradually replaced by roller printing, and you get towards more modern techniques, and in the end you can have maybe six or even 12 colours on one piece of wallpaper without a huge, huge cost. Now, by and large, in a good house, uh, when it's redecorated, the paper is taken right off the wall uh, and the uh, and stuck right back and new paper put on, so you have no evidence of the earliest um, papers. But in a cottage often, the walls are made of um, hessian or canvas, and the paper is left on and the layers build up, just making the walls stronger and stronger. And you get a result like this here, which I, is a complete mess, but you look at the bottom of it and you find fabric materials, um, here you can see uh, a bit of um, maybe uh, calico here, um, and then the layers one after another on top. This layer here is an 1850s paper, again a hand block paper. Uh, later on you get to much uh, more, uh, say early 20th century uh, patterns as you rise up through. Um, and you'll find in the deck height of a wall you'll find different papers as you rise up. You'll have a dado up to chair height, usually a darker uh, colour, often suggesting masonry or timber, then a filler, a big part of the wall, then at the top a frieze. And we have here, example here, where the very top, this is a 20th century uh, decorative finish at the very top of the wall, uh, which is fairly typical. Now, apart from um, wallpapers, you sometimes find other materials like, like this. This is palm matting, used widely um, not just for walls, but for flooring. It's a sort of cheap material used in the uh, middle of the 19th century. Um, this one came from a house in, uh, in Williamstown from the, from the walls. So it was imported from Asia, uh, made up in this, in this form. On the floor, early on, you might have a material uh, like this, which is oil cloth. Oil cloth was an invention um, designed for various purposes, used for furniture and other purposes, in which the fabric was impregnated with various resins and other materials to make it durable, and it could be used, uh, patterns could be uh, printed on it, it could be used for uh, lightweight flooring material, but also for um, upholstery of chairs. You sometimes see old chairs with a, a sort of um, uh, flaking black fabric, and that's this oil cloth material, and a heavier grade was used for flooring and indeed for the roofing of some, some buildings. Um, oil cloth as flooring was displaced by other materials like camtulicon and bulindicon, but especially linoleum, of which this is now an example here. Um, and this is a, a 20th century linoleum because it's got a complicated design inlaid. You can see it's formed on the back onto a, a canvas base, rolled in with essentially linseed oil with cork and other materials, which harden up uh, and can take this design. Uh, a, um, an inlaid linoleum will have the design passing right into the thickness of it. Otherwise, at first they had a painted pattern on the face, and the painted pattern would tend to, to wear off. And you'll find linoleum often um, not on the whole floor, but underneath the edges of cupboards and uh, doorways. And this is the sort of thing you, you find, uh, where it's been preserved um, when everything else has been pulled out.